also on home video from Greystone, from the director of the epic motion picture Gettysburg, the best-selling author of Gods and Generals, and The Last Full Measure, and the Emmy award-winning producer of Civil War Journal, comes a four-hour collector's edition home video, The Filmmaker's Gettysburg. In part one, Confederate officers at Gettysburg, you'll meet the commanders Lee entrusted with his hopes for victory. Part two, Union officers at Gettysburg, reveals the fateful twist that put the right combination of personalities in the proper roles for the first time in the war. Part three celebrates the fighting character exhibited both North and South in the Irish at Gettysburg. And part four reveals a biographical story that has never before been told. With unprecedented access to family archives, discover the life of Michael Shara, Pulitzer Prize winning author of The Killer Angels in Michael Shara, The Soul of a Writer. From the Emmy Award winning producers of Civil War Journal comes an exciting new series you'll want to add to your library. Greystone presents the unknown civil war. Lee at Gettysburg, the most beloved general in American history at the crossroads of his career. Chamberlain at Gettysburg, fate, fame, and death were only part of what he found in battle. Tilly Pierce of Gettysburg discovered the courage of a teenager mistakenly caught in the middle of the battle. Jenny Wade of Gettysburg, the tragic story of the town's only civilian battle casualty. Next on Greystone's American History Home Video Network. Have you ever had a strange feeling while visiting the town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania? Perhaps you thought you saw something, then it mysteriously vanished right before your eyes. Maybe you heard voices and sounds where no one or nothing was visible. If you have, you are not alone. Gettysburg's visitors and residents alike report a remarkable number of supernatural incidents that continue to take place here. Some say they are somehow connected to the battle that this town is famous for. I think that Gettysburg would be haunted because of so many people who died here with such a violent death so quickly. We certainly meet uh, many, many people, not, not dozens of people, but hundreds of people who, have, uh, who will report sightings to us, lots of battlefield sightings where, uh, of course, there are even phantom regiments marching and so forth. So uh, there appears to be a lot of activity. I think Gettysburg is haunted because there's probably more uh, people killed here in one spot, one small town, than in any place on the North American continent. And they're all young people who never expected to die. Is Gettysburg haunted? Discover why visitors report strange occurrences in the house where a young woman was killed by a stray Confederate bullet. Explore a haunted store where employees have the feeling there are mischievous visitors roaming at night. Check in to the hotel that has been called one of the 10 most haunted buildings in America. Learn the story of a psychic whose intuition helped her videotape a phantom patrol in the woods. Find out why spirits still linger where they died 130 years ago at a site some call the Hanging Bridge. And recall the carriage accident that killed a young girl and see the spot where her phantom body still walks at night. These are the strange accounts that lead many to call this place Haunted Gettysburg. I remember the screaming and bursting of shells and shrapnel as they tore through the struggling masses of humanity. 
the death screams of the wounded and dying, trampled underfoot by hurrying batteries, riderless horses, and the moving lines of battle. A perfect hell on earth, never perhaps to be equal, nor ever to be forgotten. The greatest battle ever fought in North America took place in 1863 over three days in July. The fighting centered in the small crossroads town of Gettysburg, population 2,400. This crucial battle of the Civil War claimed the lives of some 6,000 Union and Confederate soldiers. When the battle was over, more people had died in Gettysburg than had ever lived there. In the years that have followed, grand monuments have been erected to honor the memory of those who lost life and limb here. But there is not a monument for everyone. Some believe that many spirits wander this place because they simply want to be remembered. Author Bob Wassel collects stories of mysterious occurrences in and around the Gettysburg area. His book series, entitled Haunted Gettysburg, presents a compilation of the letters and reports he has received while researching these strange events. I think one of the things that uh, triggered my interest in uh, Gettysburg and the haunts of Gettysburg is the tour of the Jenny Wade House, and that was very unnerving. The house has a tragic history that began on July 2nd, 1863. It was the second day of fighting. A 20-year-old woman named Jenny Wade took refuge with her mother in this house on Baltimore Street. General Abner Doubleday's Union troops were in retreat during an onslaught of Confederate artillery fire. Hungry and thirsty, the soldiers gathered outside the house. They hoped for a brief respite from the fighting. They needed food for their empty stomachs and water for their canteens. Jenny Wade dutifully obliged the men. She handed out bread that she had baked and saved little for herself and her family. By the afternoon, the bread was gone. Now she could only offer the men water. Even for this comfort, the weary soldiers were grateful. At six the next morning, Jenny Wade awoke and read a passage from the Bible. She turned to the book of Psalms. Outside, the sound of artillery fire could already be heard from the battlefield. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. As the third day of battle raged outside, more Union soldiers appeared at the house looking for something to eat. Determined to help, Jenny set about baking biscuits so that they might have the strength to continue their fight. But that morning, Confederate marksmen had taken positions in the buildings on both sides of Baltimore Street. They had begun firing bullets into the surrounding area. Then the snipers turned toward the Jenny Wade house. Perhaps the rebels believed there were Union soldiers inside. At 8.30 that morning, a Louisiana infantryman in an upstairs room took aim at the door of the Wade house and fired. His bullet went through the door. Screams came from inside. The bullet struck Jenny in the back, piercing her heart. She fell to the floor as blood mixed with the dough still on her hands. Today, the Jenny Wade House is a tourist stop for most of Gettysburg's visitors. They come here hoping to get a feeling for what life was like for the civilians who lived here during that terrifying battle. But some visitors get more than a feeling from this place. They believe that the Jenny Wade House 
is haunted by the spirit of the brave girl who died here nearly 140 years ago. Author Bob Wassel recounts his experience there. I had gathered for a tour at the Jenny White House and uh, a lady came in and she looked very strange and she said she had a brochure and she said um, this picture on the brochure is my daughter Jenny and she said uh, I had to come into this house something drew me here the woman's name was Alice she was visiting Gettysburg from Silver Springs Maryland with her husband at the sight of the picture on the Jenny Wade brochure he was too disturbed to take the tour and had let Alice come alone she seemed very upset. She said uh, her daughter, her own daughter, which, whose name was Jenny, died in July at the same age as Jenny Wade. Wassel followed Alice and the tour group inside, but neither was prepared for what happened next. As she nervously toured the house, Alice began to feel as if she was being watched, but it was a familiar presence, she felt, the presence of her daughter, Jenny. The tour had begun in the parlor room where bullet holes from the Confederate snipers could still be seen in the fireplace and the furniture. They learned that it was here that Jenny had read from her Bible early on the morning of her death, and that it was here that the Wade family had taken cover at the beginning of the Battle of Gettysburg. During this, Alice began to feel not like a tourist. Instead, she felt uneasy as if she had been beckoned here by someone or something. The group moved on, but Alice lingered in front of the kitchen. At that moment, a strange vision appeared to Alice from behind the baking table. It was cloudy at first, but soon suggested the shape of a young woman. As the vision continued, she saw the woman more distinctly she appeared to Alice to be making bread, just as Jenny Wade had done here in this room almost 140 years ago. Was this the spirit of Jenny Wade? A young soul locked into this scene at the moment she was killed and perpetually, dutifully baking bread. Did her spirit never learn that the soldiers who needed food as they struggled to defend Gettysburg were all gone? Perhaps this was not a true spirit, but a faint image from a day that was so powerful, traces of it still linger here in the Jenny Wade house. What is certain is that to come to Gettysburg is to confront a past that is ever soaked with the blood of thousands upon thousands of people. Their spirits can be felt, if not directly seen here. Stop at the house where Jenny Wade died and you have only begun a journey through haunted Gettysburg. Just outside of Gettysburg, along the road that leads to town, is one of the 10 most haunted properties in the United States. This is the Cash Town Inn, famous nearly 200 years for food, lodging, and spirits. In the 1800s, this was the only inn on the stagecoach road that led to Gettysburg. The wagon drivers called this place Cash Town because the innkeeper took only cash. In October of 1862, General Jeb Stewart's Confederate troops raided the inn. And the following June, General A.P. Hill made the inn his headquarters prior to the famous battle. More Confederate soldiers and generals have walked on this porch than any other in the area. Some believe that they can still be seen. Here at the Cash Town, guests report rocking chairs that rock where no one is seated. Others have the experience of hearing someone playing Dixie in the distance on a banjo and the porch swing moves by itself when there is no wind. 
we get a lot of reports of that, that the swing will be swinging and all of a sudden it just comes to an abrupt stop. Eileen Hoover has been innkeeper here with her husband Dennis since 1987. In her experience, the ghosts seem to come with the job. The first week we lived here, every time I walked anywhere, I was looking over my shoulder. Um, and after about four or five days of doing that, I decided I am not going to live here always looking over my shoulder. So I stood in the hallway outside rooms one, two, three, and four, and I said out loud, I don't care who's here, I don't care how many of you there are, but can we make a deal? I won't bother you if you won't bother me. Eileen's own experiences here include some unexplainable and unique smells. I was cleaning a guest room that had been occupied the night before, and I was all alone, and there was a definite smell of cigar smoke that came into my face, all, almost as though it was blown into my face. And, and there was no one around. But the best way to meet ghosts at this inn is to check in for the night. George and Millie were avid visitors to Gettysburg. They had made the Cash Town Inn a regular stop on their trips here. And while they tried to take a different room each visit, they had never had any supernatural experiences here. Until tonight. When they arrived, the couple planned to turn in early in order to be rested for a full day touring the battlefield. To sleep inside the Cash Town Inn is to be engulfed by feelings of timelessness, stillness, and indeed by history itself. To rest within these walls is to become another part in the story of this legendary Civil War landmark. For George and Millie, the experience would be unforgettable. At midnight, a noise awoke Millie from a deep, restful sleep. It sounded like paper rustling or pages turning and seemed to be coming from the bench between the windows. At first, she assumed that George had gotten up to read, but he was asleep, undisturbed or unaware of the sound. Then she saw a faintly glowing form. As she watched, it took the shape of a man in a gray uniform, seated at a field desk. He appeared to be leaning over the desk looking for something by candlelight. He was tall, wore a mustache, and looked to Millie like a Confederate soldier from the Civil War. The vision was not alarming. In fact, as it continued, Millie believed she saw the man smile. Over the next few moments, the gentleman continued his ghostly paperwork. Then as slowly as he had materialized, he began to disappear. The sound of papers rustling remained for a few more minutes and then was gone. During this, George stayed asleep and Millie decided to wait until morning to tell her husband what had happened. At 4.30, they were both awakened by a loud yell. It sounded like, help me and the couple became concerned that someone at the inn was in trouble. They waited and then heard it again. No one seemed to be responding. Help me! When they opened their door to investigate, what they saw looked similar to this photograph taken by another guest. It shows a white gaseous form hovering in the hallway at the top of the stairs. We've had people who have been poked and prodded in bed during the night. We had one woman who felt hands underneath the mattress, just lifting up the mattress, lifting it up and down. Uh, rather dramatic things, and it's amazing that those people do not come down to breakfast really frightened. The haunts of the Cash Town Inn are most likely due to the fact that Cash Town was along the route of the Confederate retreat from Gettysburg. The inn was used as a field hospital and it is believed that countless wounded soldiers died inside. Today, tourists come here to relax and enjoy the charms of this quaint 200-year-old inn. But when Craig and Irene arrived here on a July afternoon, they were in for more than relaxation.
The couple got room number four, known for its view of the countryside and cool breezes in the summer. They unpacked and settled into their room. Then they got ready for an early dinner and a walk in town. When they returned at nine o'clock, Craig stopped at the foot of the stairs because he thought he saw something unusual. When Irene looked up, she saw it too. They described seeing this a woman on the stairs uh, in a long white gown. They describe her as just being kind of filmy or, or gaseous. When they got to their door, Craig unlocked it and was surprised at how cold the doorknob felt. This was nothing compared to what happened when they opened it. They were sure this was their room, but what they saw inside was a window into the past. It was a grim scene of the white lady from before. She knelt on the floor and appeared to be tending to an injured soldier, one of those who had probably died here. Within seconds, the room returned to exactly the way they had left it. Stunned, the couple slowly entered and looked around. There was no trace of the injured man or the white lady, and there was no rational explanation for what they had seen. Next, visit the ghosts of soldiers that haunt Gettysburg's hanging bridge. Gettysburg. The supernatural incidents that occur here might happen to anyone who ventures onto these hollowed grounds that were once soaked with the blood of thousands of young soldiers. Some ended their lives suddenly. Others lingered painfully until they gasped a final breath. Most died in unfamiliar surroundings, and many believe they still roam these fields trying to make peace. It has been said that when a violent death occurs, the spirit of the person goes into a nearby inanimate object such as a rock, a tree, or a building. Sachs Bridge is such a place. Built over Gettysburg's Marsh Creek in 1852, the covered bridge was deep in the Confederate rear when the Battle of Gettysburg began. Its timbers seemed to resonate with sounds, feelings and memories of the blood-soaked days of the Civil War. An innocent, cool breeze flowing through this latticework can easily cause a chill and awaken a sense of fear. There is an uncomfortable presence here that suggests that the bridge itself is alive, as if the bridge itself is breathing. Sachs Bridge was just one mile from Confederate General James Longstreet's headquarters, and his troops surely marched across it on July 1st as they prepared to attack the Union lines. Legend holds that three of these Confederate soldiers deserted their unit rather than risk defeat. They were captured and they were quickly punished. The penalty for desertion during the Battle of Gettysburg was death. That day, the deserters were taken back to the bridge they had fled over. Nooses were thrown over the rafters inside, and for one afternoon at Gettysburg, Sachs Bridge was a hanging place. There's a coal spot there today. If you can find that coal spot, apparently that's where these men were hung. Many people have reported this icy cold area on the bridge. People find their way to this pastoral setting as a place to remember part of this country's past. For others, this place truly becomes a bridge to the past. A tourist by the name of Beth visited the Saxmill Bridge. It was a very hot day, and she felt an icy cold area. She 
became very distressed by this, uh, very upset, uh, disoriented. As she finished her crossing, the cold feeling disappeared and she looked back to see what could have caused it. It was then that she saw a most gruesome sight. As Beth looked on, she saw the execution of the three Confederate soldiers take place again almost 140 years after the men had been hanged here. It seems that the spirits of Confederate soldiers still linger here around Saks Bridge. While Beth had been unprepared for her supernatural encounter, there are others who come here looking for one. Some people are gifted with what is often called a sixth sense, the intuitive ability to perceive what most people cannot. Jan had come to Gettysburg hoping to test a feeling. She believes she is sensitive to supernatural forces and, with her husband Jim, planned to try her psychic abilities on the hallowed ground around Saks Bridge. As they imagined the executions that had taken place here and the horrid fighting that occurred nearby, Jan used her intuition to lead Jim through the locality in search of unusual feelings. While they walked, Jim videotaped their experiment. Almost immediately, Jan began to pick up strange sensations. As the couple walked through a grove of trees, Jan started to get feelings of sadness. As she continued, waves of coldness seemed to pass through her body. She described to Jim that there was something just up ahead and that he should follow her that way. Jan continued on her path as Jim kept up the taping. Each step of the way brought Jan deeper feelings of melancholy. Jim, on the other hand, felt none of the sensations that his wife was reporting and that he was documenting. They crossed a small stream and Jan thought that she could feel men dying all around her. She could hear young voices gasping for a last breath. For Jim, the experience was uncomfortable and as the path in front of them widened, Jan started pointing up ahead to a group of trees. Jim trained his camera toward what he thought might be his wife's vision. They heard whispers and the sound of a horse in the distance. As Jan stared, she reported seeing the faint outline of a horse followed by what she described as a group of men in uniform. As the Phantom Patrol approached, its outline became clearer to Jan. Throughout the experience, Jim saw nothing through his viewfinder, even though Jan insisted that she saw something in the trees up ahead. The videotape that Jim made that day is a startling record of his wife's ability to detect the presence of the supernatural. Upon playback, an image of six men and a horse could actually be seen approaching the position of the couple. There is no rational explanation for what happened in that videotape, or why the scene was only visible to Jan as her husband stood behind her holding the camera. For still others who visit Saks Bridge, a supernatural experience can take place so quickly and innocently that no one realizes it happened until after it has ended. For William, a longtime resident of Gettysburg, the experience he would share near Saks Bridge would be equally disturbing and unexplainable. William's pastime and hobby is photography, and he seldom left home without his camera. The area around the Gettysburg battlefield continually offered that perfect shot, and he was always prepared for it. He was taking pictures in the forest at the east end of Saks Bridge when a pair of tourists, Laura and Marlon, came climbing over the rocks to see what he was doing. The three began talking as William pointed out the direction of General Longstreet's Confederate headquarters and explained the number of troops who would have crossed here during the Battle of Gettysburg.
As William continued his description, the group noticed another person had joined them. He was dressed as a soldier with no shoes on, apparently a reenactor. William was impressed by the authenticity of the soldier's gray uniform and the period musket he carried, and he pointed out some of the details to the couple. William offered to photograph Marlon and Laura with the soldier, but he stared blankly ahead and said nothing as the couple smiled and posed with him for pictures. When the brief photo session ended, William and the couple resumed their conversation and without a word, the soldier wandered off. Within seconds, he was nowhere to be seen and William and the group assumed they had just lost sight of him. When the film was developed, the tourists posing near Saks Bridge could be seen, but none of the photos contained any trace of the mysterious Confederate soldier. Saks Bridge spans not only water, but time. To visit here is to come face to face with more than 100 years of history. A history that replays itself over and over again in haunted Gettysburg. The city of Gettysburg is surrounded by natural beauty and a rich history. 135 years ago, Baltimore Street, in the heart of town, was the quiet center of this small community. Today, Gettysburg welcomes nearly two million tourists a year who come here hoping to capture a feeling for the past. They wander through the shops and restaurants that have flourished here thanks to the growing interest in the history of the Civil War. But wander into this gallery and bookstore, and you may be in for more than shopping. Of course, they have souvenirs and artwork, but what they also have is ghosts. A lot of times, uh, people say that they hear footsteps upstairs, and you'll go upstairs, and there'll be nobody up there. Tracy is one of the clerks who works here in the gallery. She reports some alarming events. Videos have flown through across the room, like come off the shelves with nobody being in the room. The store was not yet built when the Battle of Gettysburg took place. This was the open ground that stood between the Union and Confederate lines. Historians call it no man's land because anyone foolish enough to stand here during the battle would surely have been killed by the hail of bullets and artillery that flew past here in both directions. The store was built 29 years later in 1892 and was originally the home of a local Gettysburg family. At least one family member is purported to have died here in what used to be an attic room. There was a customer who came in um, probably about, I would say, maybe six months ago and said that he used to live in the house um, and said that he had an uncle who died upstairs in the gallery. So some people say that it's, that's who it is, who's up there roaming around. The employees have a name for the familiar presence upstairs. They call it Uncle Bob. Often when we hear the footsteps upstairs, we'll just, you know, it's just Uncle Bob. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but for one day, the spirits here gave the employees and visitors something to worry about. Elaine had come all the way from California to visit Gettysburg, and had stopped at the store after a long day of touring. There was a stillness in the air as she walked up the stairs. She was heading for the gallery where historic paintings and photographs are displayed for sale. As she looked around, it felt as if someone was breathing on her neck. She turned to look, but saw no one else upstairs with her. A painting that depicts Colonel Joshua Chamberlain at Little Round Top had caught her attention. It recalled the day when the colonel was ordered to hold the hillside at all hazards. 
130 men had fallen here in less than an hour and a half. As she studied the scene, Elaine decided to dismiss the breathing sound as her imagination playing tricks after a long day outdoors. She heard footsteps behind her, but this time when she turned, the room had somehow changed. No longer was she looking at the gallery. It now looked like an attic room. She could see an old man standing alone in the corner by his bed. Elaine knew nothing of the story of Uncle Bob, the elderly man who is thought to have died here in the 1890s. But now, she was face to face with his ghost. Terrified, she ran down the stairs through the store and into the front room to tell the clerk what had happened. But they saw nothing up there. Only the art on display could be seen. At 6 p.m., the clerks began to close the store for the night. Suddenly, Jamie heard the sound of a rock hitting the floor upstairs. Upstairs in the store, there's an old uh, brick wall. And uh, the mortar is pretty old, the bricks are pretty old. Uh, occasionally, the mortar will fall out. Uh, they'll find a piece on the floor. Uh, but at one point, they found a piece of mortar uh, right out in the middle of the room, as if it was thrown out. It couldn't have uh, fallen that far, but that's where they found it, right in the middle of the room. By 7 p.m., Jamie and Tracy had the store locked up and made sure no one was still inside. Normally, the women took turns closing out the books, and tonight was Tracy's turn. Jamie would reconcile the cash register. It was closing time and the uh, sales people downstairs uh, thought they heard footsteps upstairs, somebody walking around, a, a patron that uh, was still in the store. And they went upstairs, and there was nobody upstairs. This is a very common occurrence here in the store. It's footsteps can be heard. Their inspection of the second floor revealed no one. Perhaps it was just Uncle Bob again wandering in his attic room. They headed back down the stairs to finish up. As they reached the top of the stairs, the lights suddenly switched off. The store was completely dark. According to Tracy, this happens more often than she likes. It can be very scary, especially if you're here by yourself, you know, closing or something, but, and it happens. As the two walked downstairs, Jamie took an emergency flashlight and turned it on so they could navigate back to the front of the store. As they crept through the darkened space, the two clerks had the feeling they were not alone. These once familiar rooms now seemed disorienting. The merchandise on the shelves seemed to stare back at them. The lights would not come back on. And when they returned to the sales desk, they heard a crash that seemed to come from the room where the videos are displayed. On the security monitor, they could see videotapes that had landed on the floor as if someone or something had thrown them. Sometimes a customer will go in and knock a video off or something, and so of course you know what it sounds like, but you can be here sometimes and, you know, a, you hear the videos falling and go in and there'll be nobody there and the videos won't have just like fallen, they'll be like clear across the room from where they fell. This time, the sound did not stop. Jamie was the brave one. Since she couldn't see anyone on the monitor, she went to the doorway of the room to see why the tapes had fallen. What she saw was both frightening and astonishing. No longer did she see tapes falling. Now she saw a small unit of Union soldiers as they attempted to cross no man's land amid a storm of bullets. As quickly as the shocking scene had begun, it was over. Then the fallen men began to disappear, but the outline of each body was still there, marked by the tapes that had fallen to the floor. Was this a haunting reminder of a foray into no man's land that history never recorded? All we know is that the women now faced the grim task of picking up the tapes and replacing them. Until the next time.
The Gettysburg battlefield is remembered for the ferocious fighting that took place over these serene landscapes. After the battle, these sites were named for the blood that was shed here. Places like the Valley of Death and the rocky terrain called Devil's Den are still believed to be haunted. Two men, Jack and Robert, got a glimpse of these dark forces early on a clear, dark night in Gettysburg. The story that happened a few years ago, uh, a couple of fellows took a ride on the battlefield. It was in the evening. Uh, they were anticipating maybe seeing something. Uh, it was an eerie night, and uh, it was kind of fun. The men drove slowly under the ink-black sky that hung above Warren Avenue, the road that leads to Devil's Den. As their car turned a corner, something appeared in the trees. And all of a sudden, there were seven soldiers standing there at attention. And they went by, and uh, they were quite unnerved by that. And they turned around real fast and came back, and uh, there, was, there was nobody there. It was, the fields were clear, and they couldn't have gone anywhere. The men stopped the car and watched in disbelief as the line of soldiers vanished as quickly as they had appeared. There was no rational explanation for what these men had seen, so they decided to continue on through the stillness of the night toward the battlefield. As they drove, the two thought they could hear muffled gunshots outside. They slowed their car and listened to what could only be the sound of muskets firing in the distance. Then there was the sound of a cannon fire. Thinking perhaps they were missing a performance or battle reenactment, the men got out to see where the sounds were coming from. And then suddenly, uh, something big, uh, they described it as big, came crashing through the woods. Uh, it couldn't have been a deer. Uh, it couldn't have been a person. It was something big that was coming through the woods. They were terrified absolutely stunned and terrified. It seemed angry and was quickly coming toward them. They ran for what they hoped would be the safety of their car. Both men were too proud to confess that they were scared. And though they mustered enough courage to carry on, both knew that strange things were occurring along the dark road that leads to Devil's Den. Slowly, their car entered the battlefield parking lot, and on that dark, chilly night, they again turned off their car. They opened a map of the battlefield and, using their flashlight, tried to see where they were and what had taken place here, at this spot in Gettysburg, where so many sons and brothers had fallen in battle. While in Devil's Den, they parked their car and uh, were just sitting there talking, and uh, it was dark and one of them noticed something by the uh, passenger uh, window. And uh, they had a flashlight. They shined the flashlight on it, and there was this hideous goat. It was, had his uh, muzzle up against the window. Uh, red eyes, they told me, they said he had red eyes. As the goat stared into the car at the men, Jack grabbed his camera from the front seat and snapped a picture. As it flashed, the goat disappeared. Later, when they got the pictures developed, there was no picture. There was not even a, a flash out. The picture just didn't exist on the wall. Photos that don't appear. Videos of men who were not there. Visions, voices, hauntings. Even before the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863, there have been tales of strange sightings and phenomena associated with this hollowed ground. Of the most legendary places in Gettysburg, none is more mysterious than this rock. On it will be found tangible evidence of an account of haunting that predates the battle itself. A close look at the stone reveals the name P. Noel, carved in letters that are weathered and forlorn. Some locals in town contend that P. Noel was simply a battlefield maintenance worker who carved his own name in the rock for reasons only known to him many years ago. 
But legend strongly suggests that a young girl named Pauline Noel once answered to the name carved upon the rock. Legend has it that uh, Pauline Noel was a uh, local girl who lived there be before the turn of the century, who was a farmer's daughter, and uh, she liked to go out with her father on a wagon when he did his farm chores. Gettysburg lies in Adams County, the apple-growing capital of Pennsylvania. In the 1800s, there were few roads, and farmers skillfully maneuvered their wagons across their vast fields. It was during such a ride back from their apple orchard that tragedy struck. The wagon hit a rock, and Pauline was thrown out under the wheels of the advancing wagon. Her horrified father jumped off only to find he was too late. What he saw lying on the ground was the body of his daughter, lifeless and decapitated. Since that time, it is thought that Pauline's spirit has roamed the landscape near the very rock that sent her to her death. With ghostly fingers, she burned her name into the stone as a reminder to all that she was once alive, too. Many visitors report that if they trace the name Pauline Noel, a lot of uh, strange things happen to them. The few who dare run their fingers through the etched grooves at night have been witness to what can best be described as the wandering spirit of a headless girl. If this place is indeed haunted by Pauline Noel, one thing is certain, she is not alone. There are scores of men who fell on the battlefields here, and there are a myriad of strange sightings and occurrences that have been reported ever since. The hanging bridge conveys chills. The hotel is home to ghosts. A young woman eternally bakes bread for soldiers who have long ago vanished. A phantom patrol walks endlessly in the forest. These are but a few of the stories of the hauntings here, tales from the place called Haunted Gettysburg.